Now the moon is a really peculiar thing. Because the moon's rocks have the same sort of isotope ratios as earth rocks, and an isotope, if you don't know it, is where an element has the same number of electrons and protons, which are what makes it chemically active. So you can have, say, sulfur with a certain number of electrons and protons, but it also has neutrons in it. Now you can have more than one type of element. There's the same element because the number of neutrons in it can vary. And this is, these are isotopes. And they're very distinctive between different planets, which is why we know um, where meteorites come from when, say, that a meteorite from Mars has landed on Earth, a meteorite from the Moon has landed on Earth. We can trace them by these isotope ratios. Now, because they were exactly the same, people used to think that that's exactly where the Moon came from, that some huge object in the far distant past, when the Earth was still molten, hit the Earth, knocked off a big chunk of it, and that basically formed the Moon. Uh, there's another theory called the accretion theory, where basically the Earth and the Moon formed at the same time. Unfortunately, nowadays, we know that isn't true. And the reason why is we now have new methods for dating rocks. And the Moon, is around 4.5 billion years old. But the very oldest rock on Earth that's been found is 4 billion years. So there's a 500 million year, uh, billion year discrepancy between the two. So the Earth and the Moon did not form at the same time. And this is a bit of a problem because the orbit of the Moon is such that it couldn't possibly have been captured by Earth's gravity. And there's some other oddities about the Moon as well. There is no iron on the Moon. It has no magnetic field created by an iron core. And every other comparable sized body that we know about has got an iron core and has a magnetic field, even if it's only a small one. So what's going on? And the mystery deepens because the density of the moon is far too low. It weighs too little for its size. And people were scratching their heads about that for many years until NASA managed to drop the lunar lander on the moon and they heard it ringing like a gong, which immediately suggests that the moon is hollow. Why would the moon be hollow? Well, let's say there was a civilization on our planet. Let's say that civilization wanted to use nuclear fusion as a means of powering everything. Well, the one thing the moon has got in abundance, which as far as we know so far, occurs nowhere else in the solar system in such abundance, is helium-3. It's another isotope. It's an isotope of helium. It's an isotope of helium that has three neutrons. And it's much, much easier to get a fusion reaction with helium-3 than it is with either helium or with hydrogen, which are the two routes that we're trying at the moment, unsuccessfully, I might add. So, the moon came from somewhere else and somebody in the distant past parked it around the Earth. And there are legends from many cultures of a time when the moon was not in the sky. And Arabian astronomers speak of this, and so do certain African legends tell of the moon being towed into position, which kind of does coincide with the facts that we know about its orbit. But why remove the iron core? Well, one simple reason is magnetic braking. 
If you were to tow a planetoid with an iron core into orbit around the Earth, what's going to happen? It's got a magnetic field, the Earth's got a magnetic field, the two will interact and it will slowly fall towards the planet even if you put it in a perfect orbit with regards to gravity which the Moon is practically in a perfect orbit. Not quite, I mean it does move away from the Earth at the astounding rate of around one and a half inches per year. So it is slowly drifting off into space but I think we can forgive that level of lack of precision myself. Uh, so where did the Moon come from then? Well, I think there is one dead giveaway. And um, the asteroid belt is the giveaway. The asteroid belt is a lot smaller in terms of weight of iron rich rocks than people think. It's a lot smaller. I mean, people used to think that this was the remnants of a planet that got hit by another planet and so on and so forth. But there simply just isn't enough rock there. Um, we now have a very good estimate for the weight of iron rock that there is in the asteroid belt and it's 3.2 times 10 to the 21st so that's 32 sorry that's 3, 2 and then 20 zeros behind it kilograms which isn't an awful lot really it's enough to do some things. Now, would that fit inside the moon? The answer is yes. I did some sums based on the density of iron and you're looking at a 900 kilometer radius ball of iron, which is about right for the core of an object the size of the moon. So, did the moon start its life in the same orbit as the asteroid belt is? And was the core pulled out in order that someone could tow it into position around the Earth and have it assume a stable orbit for the purposes of gathering helium-3? and there's been a lot of uh, pictures around um, some NASA enhanced pictures that seem to show mining activities on the moon or the remnants of mining activities on the moon. So the one thing we know is that the moon is hollow and it's probably not an artificially constructed shell of metal with rock over the top as this is it is simply a small protoplanet which has had the iron core sucked out of it. And here's a picture which will show you exactly where the Moon is. We have um, the Sun, Mercury, Venus, our Earth down at the bottom there, then Mars, and then just outside the orbit of Mars in a big gap where you'd expect to find another planet, to be honest, there is the asteroid belt. But the asteroid belt couldn't have come from a planet because there's not enough of it. So what I'm saying is it's probably the core of the Moon that was pulled out many, many thousands of years ago by people or persons unknown. And this is exactly what is talked about in some of the Arabian texts, in some of the African texts. And there's another indicator as to how this might have been done. And that is the number of craters on the Moon that don't seem to be anything whatsoever to do with asteroids because, to be honest, they're the wrong shape. Um, more like explosion-style craters. And the fact that at one point the moon was extremely hot. How hot? Well, hotter than the earth was when it was molten because the rocks on the moon contain no volatile chemicals. 
there's no sulfur nothing with a melting point that um, would be lower than the melting point of rock has actually survived at all nothing has formed from interior volcanism over the years as it as it did do on earth um, is actually left on the moon so the moon was heated up so my conjecture is because there are some really large craters on the moon I mean there's one that's over 500 miles across that essentially fusion bombs were used to drill a hole in the crust and then some type of penetrating bomb was used in the interior to force the iron core out through the hole and as it gets forced out it comes out in jagged fragments and this is in fact our asteroid belt so I hope you've enjoyed this little bit of conjecture and an explanation as to why the moon might be hollow and the other thing is the fact that it always points to the earth well if you're using some type of penetrating bomb to remove as much of the core as you can you won't get all of it and on the side of the um, moon opposite to whatever large hole you've made to bomb it out you will actually have iron left and the whole object will actually be off centre it'll be weighted more on one side of the other than the other and this in fact is the case with the moon the side towards the earth weighs around about six percent more than the side away from the earth and this is what keeps it facing towards the earth because of the action of gravity all fascinating stuff so it seems to stack up anyway i hope you've enjoyed this if you have please like share and subscribe thank you very much Well, you could subscribe to Arduino Tronic or just go jump in a lake. Go and casual, actual but classic.